Teenager Place and the Meraki Institute of Learning proudly present the RISE Wellness and Resilience series centered on resilient parenting, cultivating your child's resilience. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, hi, I'm Tanya, and this show is an 11-part series digging deep into the RISE framework, covering the four core pieces of RISE Wellness and Resilience. This includes first, R, relationships. How relationships and experience influence a child's resilience. Secondly, I, indicators of well-being. How we integrate research-informed elements to enhance the well-being of children. Third, S, social-emotional development. How we can increase the emotional intelligence of children through everyday interactions. And lastly, E, enhancements how we can interconnect the whole child to offer the greatest opportunity for wellness and resilience. When we cultivate a child's wellness and resilience, we offer a bright place for children to rise. Rise through difficulty, rise through struggle, rise with the means to manage, restore, and grow. So, as a wife, mother, aunt, sister, daughter, and friend to many parents, I am thankful you are joining on this learning journey with me. For today's topic, we'll be covering awareness of self and others, an element of the social and emotional development section of the RISE Wellness and Resilience Framework. Today, you'll be hearing from Lindsay Swales, Clinical Manager for Teenagers Outpatient Clinic. Welcome, Lindsay. Thanks for having me. Lindsay, you're joining us today as a mother, a therapist, and with a lot of expertise as it relates to wellness and kids' mental well-being. So, Lindsay, one of the things that I have heard about self-awareness, and tell me if I'm wrong, is that it's being connected to myself, like knowing what am I feeling in the moment? What is, what is my body saying in the moment? Is that, is that a piece of being self-aware? Absolutely. There's a lot of different pieces that go into being self-aware, but one of those pieces is being aware of our, our body sensations and then also knowing how our past and our values and just all these different pieces go into the way that we're showing up with others. So I'm guessing there are times that it's hard to be like grounded and centered. That's what I almost heard you say. And those are kind of complex words, if you will, but maybe like being me in the moment, right? Like that could be complex. What does that mean? Like, how do I discover that? Is that what you're talking about when you think of self-awareness? So the more understand that we have of ourselves, then the more we know how we're um, responding to different situations, what things might trigger us, and just how we're coming across to others. Yeah, it's almost also like our preferences, right? We could communicate our needs and our tendencies. But I love what you said that it's also then this like higher order emotional intelligence that when we're aware of ourselves and our reactions, our responses, maybe our nonverbals, we're aware of how that influences our everyday interactions, our relationships, maybe. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit, why is being aware of yourself important? Why, why is this in this framework? Relationships can be hard. And when we think of relationships and interactions, we've got two people or more that are coming together and we're all bringing our own stuff to the table. <laughs> and all of those pieces then influence how we're interacting. We bring our beliefs, we bring our um, past, our lens, our values, all of that comes together. And so it's important to just be aware of, of what those things are so that we can have more healthy and joyful relationships with others. How can this help us as parents to, when I think about it with interacting with our children, right? I'm guessing this component is so important for us as adults and we'll get to how we cultivate it in kids, but how can being self-aware help us as parents? Our kids are another human being that we're in a relationship with. So they come with their own stuff too. And so when we are parenting, you think about just teaching them and loving them and knowing that we're bringing our stuff to that. But we also need to think about when we 
discipline them or um, are helping them to grow, the more that we can be aware of ourselves, especially in those tricky times or those tough times, we can know um, that there might be things that trigger us and then we can be aware of that and manage ourselves so that we can be more calm and collected in those moments so that then we can help our children. I hear you say, I heard you say anyway, this concept of values. I'm guessing what you're talking about is that when we're self-aware, we can more often live maybe in congruence to those values, which does that bring me more joy as a parent to, to live kind of in a way that's authentic to myself? Absolutely. The more that we can live true to our values, I think the happier we're going to be as parents. And, and I know for myself, a goal in my relationships with my children is to hopefully instill some of those, those same values. Um, and so if we can show up being true to those in those relationships, then hopefully they can continue to grow too. What a fascinating concept, Lindsay. When I think about social emotional development, it's something that we're always trying to foster. In ourselves, in our kids in particular, we see research telling us that this is a vital element to kids being successful in life. And such a huge piece of that is this awareness of myself and this awareness of others. So I'm excited to hear more from you when we come back about how we can cultivate this in kids, how we can grow this piece of kids so that they can live a more resilient, well life. Excited to hear more when we return. Tenant Your Place is here for children, teens, young adults, and families as they navigate the many stressors of the world today. Tanager inspires, empowers, and heals by providing tools and support needed to navigate the hardships of life and overcome obstacles. Our expertise and specialty trainings offer a wide range of approaches, and we'll join alongside you to create solutions to enhance your wellness. We are here for you and your family virtually or in person. Tanager Place, your child, our focus. No matter the challenges you and your family face, Tanager Place is here for you. Our team of specialists in mental, emotional, behavioral, and social health want to join alongside you during these tough times. Tanager will offer the tools needed to inspire, empower, and heal while providing the support you need to build the strongest foundation for success and wellness. We'll meet you wherever you are in your journey and together define a path to reach your goals. Together we rise, Tanager Place, your child, our focus. Lindsay, we just learned about the definition of awareness of self and others and what it means, why it's important. So let's dive into how do we cultivate this through our relationship with our children. So what does awareness of self and others involve? Awareness of self and others involves self-reflection, empathy, and perspective taking. Those are complex words. So let's go into each of that. Like, I want to think about as a parent, how do I do this? So when you think of self-reflection, what does that mean? Yeah, so self-reflection is really just taking a look at ourselves and understanding some of the pieces that go into making us who we are. So it's like being curious about why did I say that? Why was I anxious during that moment? Why was I scared then? It's just kind of like being curious about what we do, who we are, what we say. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really is everything about us. There's so many pieces that make us who we are. So you need to consider our upbringing and just past life experiences that, that may shape the way that we view the world. We need to think about different personality traits that we have, different communication styles, conflict styles. Um, I love that. And when you say empathy, because that's like a higher order. I've heard some articles or books talking about like that's not something we naturally have as humans which is a phenomenon to me because i i just thought we like we grow it or we have it but it's kind of cultivated right yeah it's definitely a skill that that we need to learn and grow and so when you think about empathy is that the same as like compassion like just feeling sorry for someone or is it different no it's it's kind of a little bit deeper than that. So it takes on the perspective taking and, and even more than just walking in someone else's shoes, but really trying to deeply understand how another person might feel or experience something. Okay, so empathy taking is how, how might of what I said influenced how they felt or how might what I did influence how they felt. But perspective taking is also thinking like, 
what could they have been thinking about or why they responded the way they responded. It's just almost putting yourself in their shoes to think about their responses or reactions to you. Right. Okay. Wow. So tell me then, what things impact how we show up in relationships? What things should we be self-aware of as, as parents? One of the things that we should think about is our communication styles and how it is that we are communicating to others, but also how we're receiving that information too, especially when we're talking to our kiddos. I hear often communication being not just verbal like preferences, but nonverbals. I'm guessing that's a huge part of this and relationships. Absolutely. We need to think of the nonverbals that we're giving off and also our tone and sarcasm. All of those pieces go into that communication style that then our kids, they pick up on. Because I'm guessing that the way that I communicate will certainly influence the way that my kids are communicating, maybe requesting their needs or or dealing with conflicts. So this self-awareness piece is, how did I come off? How might I have sounded? What did I say that could have upset someone? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Kids learn by their experiences and their interactions. And so the communication styles and patterns that they're seeing from us is gonna be the way that they then turn around and communicate because that's what's normal. So I'm sure this has a big influence in conflict styles. Like we all deal with conflict differently, right? Absolutely. And so I'm guessing in this element of self-awareness and awareness of others, it's important for us to know how we deal with conflict and how we help our kids cultivate their awareness of how they manage conflict. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we all manage conflict differently. Um, some people need some space. Some people need to talk about it right away. And so knowing what you need in order to manage that conflict in the most healthy way, and then also being aware of how your kiddo might need to manage those situations as well. So would I just, as a parent, would I reflect those things to my kiddo? Like, oh, it seems that you're frustrated, buddy. I notice that you want alone time when you're frustrated. Is there an element of me cultivating that awareness so that they develop the awareness? Absolutely. There's a lot of different ways that through our interactions with the kiddos, we can help to build those skills. I love that. So if if I were a viewer watching right now, how might we encourage the viewer to explore some of their own awareness of self? Yeah, there are a ton of assessment tools out there um, that you can find just by doing a quick internet search. Um, but one of the um, assessments that I would recommend would be the Myers-Briggs assessment. So that's gonna be a self-assessment tool um, that gives us information about a personality type that we fall into um, and can help to give us more information about our strengths, our preferences, um, and how we make decisions in life. What I've also heard you talk about before, Lindsay, is something called personality priorities, which I know is an Adlerian theory, and Dr. Terry Cotton really coined this. But what I've heard you say about this is that she says that we all have one or two dominant personality priorities. And I always think back to when you talk about how this is so important for us to know what are ours and then what are others, in particular, our own kids. Yeah. Because if I'm a personality type that is an achiever or um, wants to get things done, but my kid is more laid back or go with the flow, I'm sure that this can cause it, uh, maybe struggle in our relationship. Definitely. I think that it can cause struggle when they're opposing personality types. And then also if you're similar too, you think about um, parents and children that are kind of both a little bit hard headed and sometimes you <laughs> yes. bump heads with them, but being aware of, okay, these are, this is part of my personality and this is part of my child's, you can learn to work with that so that you can have more positive interactions. So it's almost a sense of me saying, mommy wants you to do the extra credit work you're saying that what you did was enough. What could we do to find middle ground? Or how could we compromise? Or how do we work through this? Like that awareness of what I want, this acknowledgement of what they want and how to navigate through that. Yeah. I love this idea, Lindsay, of being reflective as parents, being aware of who we are as humans so we can better navigate interactions and relationships in the world around us. 
It seems like when we have that awareness, we can also communicate our preferences, our tendencies, and being able to have those type of resilience keep us more well. They help us through the hard times. They, they cultivate that resilience. So stay tuned when we come back, more good learning on how we can continue to develop these skills in our kids. Being a teenager is hard. If you're a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer questioning teen, Tanger Place is here for you. The LGBTQ Center at Tanger Place provides a safe and confidential environment for LGBTQ youth, families, and allies. Programs at the center are diverse and include support groups, special art offerings, mentoring programs, pride cafe, community service, health initiative classes, parenting workshops, financial literacy, tutoring, and career exploration. The center is a place to come, fit in, and belong. Being a part of the center is a great way to meet new people and build a support network. To learn more about events and group activities, visit tangerplace.org. Tanger Place, your child, our focus. Learning your child is touched by autism can be overwhelming, but it can also be a relief to know what is going on and that you are not alone. There are services and people who can help. Tanager Place's Autism Services promotes solutions and resources while supporting the needs of individuals touched by autism and their families. Tanager Place offers social skill group sessions, which provide a peer environment where kids can learn healthy communication skills, social awareness, and structure in a way that enhances their developmental needs. Tanager Place, your child, our focus. Lindsay, you've given so much valuable information. I'm wondering, as a parent, how can I help my kid build a greater sense of self-awareness in the here and now, even awareness and perspective taking when they interact with others? Because it seems so important to their development. Yeah, we can help to build that in our kids just through our interactions with them. I love that. So tell me, how can I help my, my kid be more aware of themselves and the interactions that they're having? One way that we can help build this is just by being curious in our interactions with them. So we can use open-ended questions. Um, these can be just as simple as exploring their likes, their dislikes, anything just to get them talking and thinking about um, different things that make them unique that then they would bring into interactions with others. One of the things I've heard you talk about is this concept of meta communication, which is, it sounds so complex, but when you explained it to me, it really helped me understand one, how this can help my child gain insight and awareness of themselves and others. And two, how I can utilize it throughout my relationship with them. So what does metacommunication mean and yeah. how do I do it? Yeah, so metacommunication is really just communication about communication. <laughs> okay. So um, as we know, when we are communicating something, there's more that goes into it than just the words. Kids sometimes aren't aware of those other pieces that go into communicating. So it may be their nonverbals. It could be even just their, their movements or their tone. So what we can do as adults is we can communicate back to them those pieces that we're seeing within their communication that they may or may not be aware of. So in real life example, if, if I'm talking to my 16 year old daughter and she's rolling her eyes, meta communication might be you're feeling annoyed with me. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. So how can I interact with my kiddo in a, in, in a certain way that helps this naturally develop then? Tell me more like real life examples of what this would look like. Yeah, I, I think about the ways that I interact with my children and then also in my therapy space with the kiddos that I work with. Um, and there's lots of different skills per se that I use. Um, so one thing that you could do is tracking and reflecting. So this is really just um, bringing awareness to the child of what it is that you're observing. So you can just simply state what it is that you're seeing or what it is that you're hearing from them. So give me an example. If I'm a kiddo and I'm ramming my trucks, what, what would that, what's tracking and reflecting look like? Yeah, so tracking is really just stating what it is that you're seeing. So you can say to them, you know, you're moving that truck up and down and trying to avoid giving some of the um, judgment um, and simply just state what it is that you're seeing. Okay, and so the concept of this is that when I point that out, they become more aware of 
what they're doing, like their actions and their behaviors. Yeah, absolutely. And then we can also use reflection and identify some of the feelings that we might be observing too. So like you're ramming the trucks, your face looks mad or whatever their face is showing. Yeah. Okay. And so if the kiddo is also talking during this time too, is there a way I can integrate awareness through the words that they're saying? Yeah, we can use restating of their content or paraphrasing to kind of act as a verbal mirror back to them so that they can then become aware of the things that, that they're saying. So if my kid's like, I hate bath time, what would I say back to just kind of be present but reflect back or paraphrase? Yeah, you can just simply state back, you really don't like bath time, or bath time is not fun for you right now, or you don't want to take a bath. Like, so this is hard. Can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So am I just agreeing with the kid at that point? Do, is it just, okay, we don't have to do bath? Is it, I'm guessing it's not about just agreeing. Yeah, so it's not just agreeing with them, but it helps also give them just a sense of validation and letting them know that you are listening, you do hear them, you don't necessarily have to agree with them, but just bringing that awareness. Because me just saying that helps them develop that awareness. Right. And I'm guessing the second piece of awareness of others is I could say maybe something like, and bath time and having a healthy body is really important. Do you want to get in now or get in in two minutes? Or, you know, is that what it's all about? Yeah. You can always take that next step to set those boundaries or help them to follow through on the task that needs to be done. Um, other things that you can do to add on to just the tracking and reflecting then would be to follow up with more curiosity to help them incorporate some of those perspective taking or empathy skills too. Okay. So almost like, go with me here, Lindsay, as my mind's just kind of rambling, saying, you know, bath time is hard. I wonder if bubbles would make it better. Like if you're almost thinking of ways to help them become more aware of how they can engage in expectations or norms in a way that helps them do it and be more satisfied with that? Or, or what do you mean by that? Yeah, I think that it helps them to um, come up with some of those problem solving skills there, but it also can just help to give them language. So a lot of times our kids might be feeling a certain way, but they may not be able to express that verbally to us. So by using those statements, like you said, that I wonder, that helps to give some guesses or um, some language around what they might be feeling. Okay, so this is starting to, like all the dots are connecting for me is how these pieces really help bring almost insight to our children as to who they are in the world, their preferences and others, like other people's preferences and how they navigate those two pieces and become more socially and emotionally aware in order, I'm guessing, to have the healthiest relationships possible as their little life develops. Right. So what about when they're in conflict with others though, right? I have two kids in school now and this seems to come up more and more as they have more exposure to other peers. I've heard you and other guests talk about validation, like hearing the story, meaning making. Can I ask certain questions to help my child perspective take or um, deepen empathy for others? Yeah, we can um, respond to them using open-ended questions and just encouraging them to tell their story, to explain to us what it is that happened. It's interesting because there are times that I actually witness my kids fighting, the siblings, right? And one child will come to tell me the story and I actually saw it. So it didn't exactly happen that way. Do I try to prove my kid wrong or is just the essence of storytelling important as a piece of this awareness of self and others and development? Yeah, I think it's important for us to know that everybody's perception and experience with an event is going to be their own. So it's important to allow the children to explain to us what it is that happened. Because while they're doing that, their brains are processing that information. So I might ask questions like, what was that like for you? What do you think that felt like to brother? Like I would ask just follow-up questions to help deepen that awareness. Absolutely. 
So I'm guessing, Lindsay, in relationships, harm is done. And a part of the piece of awareness of self and others is how we make repair, right? Yeah. So what are ways that we could facilitate this for our kiddos so that we deepen their awareness of self and others? Yeah, we can do this through asking questions. Again, I know that's been my response to a lot of things, but I think a lot of it is just asking those questions to get the kiddos thinking about things in a different way. So Lindsay, what are specific questions that I could ask? Yeah, we can ask about what happened. So we can ask more um, in-depth questions about that by asking, you know, what role did you play in that? Who was maybe affected by that? Um, how did others feel? What, what do you need to do to make things right again? This just made me giggle because this is certainly so important in, in when things go bad and making a repair. But it made me think of something that happened for my family this last weekend when we were taking a car ride and the proactive stance to this. We started to play Would You Rather, like, would you rather be Superman or Batman? Or even those fun, silly games, ways to just help kids be curious about themselves, their preferences. Like, we can make fun and have fun around these pieces, right? Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I know I'm walking away with a greater sense of understanding, of awareness of self and others, and tangible ideas that I could do with my family. So if there were one or two key things that you wanted the listener to walk away knowing, what would they be? I think it's just so important to take the time to be self-aware, do some of that work so that then you can be more true to yourself when you show up. Being a parent is hard. It's one of the most valuable and, or it's one of the most um, rewarding jobs and it's so tough too. So being aware of yourself and what you're bringing to the relationship is just one thing that you can do to make your job a little bit easier. So just modeling this for our kids. You know, I think about, oh goodness, going to the movie theater and saying, oh, mommy doesn't like to sit in the front rows. My neck always hurts and I don't like that. I mean, it's literally just modeling this, right? And Absolutely. It's, and it's allowing kids to know that that's good and okay to be aware of your preferences, advocate for your preferences, but also be aware of other people's preferences. And at the end of the day, it's a give and take. It's a compromise in relationships. Right. I love this. So cultivating awareness of self and others and kids, it seems like a vital element important to social emotional development. Lindsay, thank you for joining us today and sharing your expertise. Tanage Your Place is here for children, teens, young adults, and families as they navigate the many stressors of the world today. Tanager inspires, empowers, and heals by providing tools and support needed to navigate the hardships of life and overcome obstacles. Our expertise and specialty trainings offer a wide range of approaches, and we'll join alongside you to create solutions to enhance your wellness. We are here for you and your family virtually or in person. Tanager Place, your child, our focus. Thank you for being with us and taking time out of your day to learn alongside us in order to offer a bright place for the children in your lives to rise. Today's series brought to you by Tanager Place and the Meraki Institute of Learning. For more information, please visit our website at www.tanagerplace.org.